Hello and welcome to Clever Paws. Welcome to another video for the Animal Artist Collective and for this round you guys chose Australia. And with the fires ranging right now, a very good choice indeed. As for the animal I will be focusing on, that's the tree kangaroo. As iconic co as common kangaroos are for Australia already, the tree kangaroo is extra special. The Animal Artist Collective was created by Jennifer Charlie from Jennifer Charlie Art and Denise from In Liquid Color in March of 2018. Every other month, the members get together to create animal-focused art based around a common theme. For 2018, those were biomes, and it has now changed for 2019 to animal groups. For this year, the categories for you to vote on are split by continents. There are 6 rounds of the AAC a year and 7 continents, so if you didn't get your favorite one, it will probably appear again in another poll. I will leave a link to the Facebook page of the collective where you can vote on the next team and check out the members of the collective. I am not a member myself, but I like the challenge that comes with it and of course I like animals. So I try to get a piece done each time. But let me first tell you a little bit about the Animal Artist Collective or AAC. But before we get into it, I wanted to give a shout out to Annika Victoria who used a recent video of hers to raise fund for the firefighters days before getting her own evacuation order. As of the time of the recording this voiceover, the area on fire in Australia is about the same size of Belgium or Ireland or the state of Tennessee in the US. I will add in a map here what the same area looks like when seen on a map of England. It is the most accurate map I could find based on figures by the BBC. If you are or know a crafter, I also include a link to a Facebook page a friend of mine shared with patterns etc. for animal pouches and wraps that are needed for survivors of the fire. Bushfires are by no means new to Australia, but the size and intensity of the current ones is new and directly linked to climate change, with the added caveat that the tea tree oil that is present in some of their flora burns at so much higher a temperature, which is also why it is so good for burn treatment in medical practice. But back to the animal I have chosen, which of course is still the tree kangaroo. As of before the fires, the two Australian species were considered near threatened, but many of those from Papua New Guinea are either vulnerable or endangered. A lot also depends on how they react to danger. The chances are going to be much better if it is to run away on the ground as opposed to up a tree and whether the large fires are going to spread to Queensland from the south. Unfortunately I could not find a definite answer, but I almost fear that given their habitat, up is their preferred mode of defense as they are better adapted to life off ground. How much the fires will affect the tree kangaroo, we don't know yet, but we can be fairly certain it's not going to be a good development for them. The main threat to it comes from habitat destruction for both food and refuge purposes. Tree kangaroos mostly live off leaves and fruit, also in captivity some have been observed to eat eggs and smaller animals too, making them omnivores but that hasn't been observed in the wild yet. Tree kangaroos are marsupials, with a common characteristic being that they carry their young in a pouch on their belly. Close to 70% of all marsupial species are found in Australia, Tasmania and New Guinea, including surrounding islands. Versa, tree kangaroos are the only truly arboreal macropods a family within the marsupial group that also includes kangaroos, wallabies, and guacas, amongst others. 
more specifically for this video, I shall focus a bit more on the Bennett's tree kangaroo, one of two species found on mainland Australia, and more specifically the rainforest south of Hooktown, Queensland. Tree kangaroos are solitary animals, so much so that in captivity, isolating pregnant females gives their offspring the best chance of survival. It is highly elusive and also one of the larger tree kangaroos, with male weighing from 11.5 to 14 kilograms and females between 8 and 10.6. They are very agile and can cover a good bit of vertical distance when leaping between branches without losing footing or injury. It almost completely feeds off leaves and fruit, notably Schaeffler, the um umbrella tree, but also vines and ferns. In total, more than 30 different plant species are known to make up its diet. Schaeffler actinophila is an evergreen tree that can grow up to around 15 meters high and has leaves that compound in groups of seven leaflets. Its flowers grow on the top of the tree, typically starting in early summer and lasting for several months. Now that it is rarely being hunted, its main predators are python and the dingo. It is thought that the Bennett's tree kangaroo is the one closest related to its evolutionary ancestral form. But since you have been watching me paint quite so patiently, maybe I should tell you a bit about the art as such as well. I am again using my bamboo based multimedia paper since I really like how easy it is to add colored pencil over watercolor for it and in the beginning I wasn't sure how much quote unquote help of that nature I would need. As for the paints I am using a mixture of my Schmincke Academia paints, the one from the advent calendar and my Sennelier professional paints. Since I started my set of Sennelier paints based on the highly unusual and natural colors in their range, it makes them perfect for nature drawings. As usual, a list of all the materials used can be found in the description below. For the first step, I went with a very abstract laying down of colors, gradually working my way up to more refined. I have been playing around with the loose style of color placing over the last couple of weeks of course. In the end, I ended up using my watercolor pencils to add definition for some focal point effect and to even out some splotches and bleeding. It did give the tree kangaroo a bit of a pop in the illustration and also showed off the mid-ground Scheffler leaves in some of the corners. And even though I thumbnailed the illustration, when I picked up the paper it was a lot wider than what I had planned for and I couldn't be bothered to crop it back to proportion. Overall, I think I didn't do too badly and I like the difference in detail over the various planes of the illustration. Of course, there are things I can improve upon, but you either win or you learn, and if you are good, you will also learn when winning. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, and I shall see you next week.